Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. I got a really dominant run play for you. I'm using the Packers playbook, and it's out of the I form wing. Um, this play right here is a really good and very simple run play too. There's a couple different ways you can run it. It's a HP power O at the top there. So this play is real simple. All you're really going to do is flip it, and you're going to see how you get some really serious. Uh, big holes and big run lanes um, just, there's time you're not gonna flip it every time but it's I think that the best way to do it is essentially to flip the play and you can see how it's just basically creating a huge hole again 10 yards each time that's not even the biggest plays that you'll get out of this you'll get much bigger plays um, but you really it's really one read it's really all about uh, reading where the defensive end is that you're running right after there's a certain element of pre-snap read that you really want to do, um, but most times I feel like the best way to do it is kind of run it like a counterplay. Counterplays were so dominant last year, uh, and this is not a counterplay. It's really just an augmented, uh, you know, going to the strong. Look at the giant hole, though. I mean, there's just so much space, especially if your receiver downfield can get a little bit of a block uh, like he did there. But like I said, you can run this to uh, either side. Um, you know, you just want to do a little bit of a pre-snap read, but in, in most cases I find, especially when you see a big hole on the left side, most people are going to over-pursue uh, to the one side there. I didn't really hit the hole. That would have been a perfect opportunity to get it outside. Like I said, you're reading the defensive end there, uh, right outside your left tackle. If he gets wide, you typically want to go up the hole right there, which, which I can tell right now, the pre-snap read, I can pretty much see that there's going to be a hole. But if he closes that hole, look at that giant hole, if you, I, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't hit it, my dude kind of slowed down. But if he closes that hole, you typically want to get outside. But the hole nine times out of ten is right there up the gut. Uh, sometimes you just make a dude miss like right there. These juke moves are nasty this year. Um, you can see how you just get some nice big plays, some nice easy touchdowns. This is going to be one of the more explosive plays you're going to see early on uh, in this game in Madden this year. Um, like I said, I'll show you a couple different ways to run it. This one here, I'm just showing you how consistent it is. It doesn't really matter what the front is. I'm running against 4-3. I'm also playing against All Madden, which a lot of times I typically didn't do last year because All Madden, uh, All Pro is what the competitive uh, rating is set at. I'm not sure if it is this year, uh, but I accidentally set it to All Madden, so you're seeing how dominant this is, even against an All Madden uh, defense. And you're going to get huge blocking advantages this year with these two tight end sets. Look at that big gaping hole at the gut. We get another touchdown. Uh, but like I said, there's a couple different ways to do this. It's not all just this one way. You can run it the normal way, and I'll show you how that works real quick. Um, you still got to put a little bit of move. You can see how I still didn't get as much distance before a guy got in my way. I still find the best way to do it is run it to the opposite side, but you can run it this way. You can also motion out your tight end, kind of single him as a blocker on the corner. I find that that really helps. Um, we'll see how that looks here. I mean, that's that tight end is typically going to block that corner anyway, but you want him to get outside of that, uh, of that corner, so that really... Um, it helps to set the edge a little bit to, to motion this guy out. So you really want to do your pre-snap read. You want to see, um, you know, which one gives you the best advantage uh, pre-snap. Here you can see, you know, that that, that cornerback is get pancaked by the tight end. Is the halfback toss strong right there? So I'm, I have an option to run this to either side. There's really two audibles, two ways you can make this. If you want to, you can motion over this tight end. Um, a couple of plays that I have in the Bucks. Uh, a scheme that I made out of the same thing. The tight end motion is pretty good, uh, but I'm not going to really say that that's the best way. I would say the best way to do this is just straight up hit the uh, the right stick to the left and just run it towards your wide receivers. If you leave it how it is, if you think you're going to get an adjustment advantage on the other side, motion this guy over um, and just you know move that corner back out. There's really is really so many different ways you can run this. Um, so it's really up to you. So what I think I'm going to do though, uh, I, I think the most effective way. Uh, even though I have at the moment a blocking disadvantage, I mean, I'm messing this whole thing up. Even though at the moment the blocking disadvantage I have is kind of, um, well, it was anyway, it was a linebacker being blocked by a receiver. Now it looks like I got a safety being blocked by a receiver, which I like a lot better. So let's go ahead and let's flip it. Let's run this one time. And I've got to make a guy miss, and I didn't do it. Just working my way into this. So let's go ahead and let's rock this a few times. Oh, there's some good setup. There's some good set. Oh, man, almost. There's about 10. I'm getting more and more. So we went ahead and put our real starting running back in. I just want to see how Dalvin Cook was. Uh, but I know Murray's an absolute savage. Great pancake out there. Great juke move. Every get 15. Like I said, this is just an outstanding way to mix in um, a run. So they have to respect the run. You can't just go all straight past. Oh, man. Come on. Something like hold that block, bro. Um, but like I said, it's, it's probably best to motion that receiver over sometimes so you don't have a receiver blocking a linebacker because you're not going to make a living off of that. All right, so let's go. I mean, look at that big hole right there. I mean, that's a perfect scenario to cut it up inside. And if you get that right, you get the wrong block, bro. If you get the wrong block, I'd have been gone if you hit the right guy. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's rock this a few more times, see if we can get some, uh, oh my goodness, sometimes that lane right up the center there is there, and I get my first touchdown. You gotta be where, we keep an eye on that. Yeah, you can see this is a nice 10, 15 yard compliment with relative ease um, to get, you know, to go with that run play. I mean, just make a guy miss every once in a while, and that's it. Run this with a better offensive line, you'll get much better results. This is not a very good offensive line. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna end it on a touchdown here though. We're gonna end it on a touchdown here though. This <laughs> There's is a some good blocking. The pistol wing. Uh, what makes it unique is you have a um, you know you have a two tight end cell on the one side, and then you got a receiver. It's just it's just a little different. It's not it's not the you know the biggest difference in the world, but there's some really good plays in it. And uh, the first one I'm going to show you is probably the best one. It's the strong power. The strong power is in a lot of different formations. It's in a lot of formations where you have you know three wide receivers, uh, two tight ends, but and no wide receiver on the outside. What makes this one unique is it has two tight ends on the outside, plus you have uh, two pulling guards. I mean, that, just do the math. That's an out, that's an amazing uh, block advantage you're about to have so let's go ahead and let's pick that like i said plus you have a blocking receiver now in other formations i would say you want to flip the play with the right stick but given the the huge blocking advantage that you have that's really not the way to go um you can see how you know there's just oh look at all the pulling diagrams <laughs> you have here now wofford here his job is to seal the edge if you want to you can motion one of these tight ends out i don't find it's necessary but it's something that is always an option it's a good um you know technique i might have a couple pass plays where you can mix in that motion but it's something that's you know can definitely draw attention um, from the from the user opponent if you have an opportunity to do that. I wish I could move this guy over. That'd be even crazy, but obviously you can't do that. But I think that motioning him in like this um, is going to be helpful to distract your opponent as well. So let's go ahead and let's run this a couple times. Um, hopefully that guy doesn't get that edge. He almost did there. Uh, first play, you know, I got about ten. Not not too great. We'll get more. It's always a transition going from talking to running these plays look at that dude that corner just ran look he fell again like he's dead he taught me a lesson all i do is make him miss too and i've been gone um all right let's get inside there's always gonna be lanes in Ooh, come on bro that was a touch wow they're really stacking this box all right so let's go man we got some chop blocks out here oh let's go you got shook and oh man don't catch me thank you first touchdown let's go Ooh, man chiefs are standing tall today oh my goodness now that is blocking right there Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, <laughs> that, that's blocking. As you see, I switched it up, I put a speed back out there. Oh man, that's just dirty, yeah, that's right. Just single, just ISO that guy, make a miss. I mean, they're really stacking the box heavy right now. I mean, this is like eight in the box every play and it's still getting it done. Oh, you gotta make that block, bro. Where are you going, 15? Turn around and block. You can see I'm getting much better results with a speed back. Uh, I tried to run with Marshawn Lynch, and it worked to an extent. All right, let's see if I can crack one more touchdown here. Now that I'm using a speed back, there's a good block, and we make that guy miss. And you can see how much easier it is with a speed back rather than Marshawn Lynch as a power so back. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick the best run play, and this is the one I'll be running the most is the halfback pitch. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that. And we'll run. Uh, we'll keep running against Nickel. Like I said, you want to be consistent with that motion. Whoever you're motioning, just keep motion. I'm, you know, what I'm saying you always want to create that. I'm not, this is not the way I'm running. I'm actually running to the wrong side. But um, if I were to flip the play, like you want to run to the open side of the field too. So all I would do is hit the right stick to a side um, and flip the play. But if I'm running it uh, to a strong side, that would be the best thing to do. Would be to motion over Fleener uh, and create like a like a like a look like this. Uh, but I actually want to move the ball uh, back to the center. I think here because. I want more running room. Yeah, you always want to make sure you run it to the open side of the field and to the uh, tight end side of the field because your tight end's typically your best, your strongest blocker. Although Fleener's not a great blocker, I don't think. Uh, but you're going to see, oh, well, that was just hard, man. Peterson, man, you got to get it done. I don't know if Peterson's much of a speed back anymore. He didn't feel very fast on that first run there. Um, this way here, when I motion the tight end, you see he's the furthest out blocker, which is nice. Oh, he's going to get downfield and set that edge. He's going to get downfield and set that edge. Let's go. Yeah, it's much better having your tight end on the outside blocking. Uh, because, like I said, if you run it this way, he's on the inside. And then you have a receiver trying to set that edge. And that's not as good as a, as a tight end. But I'll show you what that looks like just to show you the difference. And you see there, it just doesn't have the same effect. I could have went outside for a little more. Still about 10 yards. 
Uh, but the best way to do it is definitely have your, your tight end outside. Let him get on that corner. Let his blocking assignment be that. Look at that. Look at that. There's just nobody here. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There's nobody there. There's nobody outside. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to keep doing this. Tight end way is obviously the best way, like I said. That's a man coverage. Changes things a little bit. Uh, but it's still going to, you know, try to set my blocker there. It's going to work a lot better against zones. Zones run, run better. I mean, these run plays work better against zones. I mean, like this here is a zone. So you're going to see a little bit better of a blocking setup. Man coverage. Can, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This is disgusting. See what I mean by the difference between the zone and the man? I mean, there's no way there. I found this running play, and this whole scheme is amazing, but the running play, the first running play I'm going to show you is absolutely amazing. Now, this whole uh, setup is on my uh, Patreon account. It's about seven or eight plays, uh, full scheme. Uh, the first play I'm going to show you there at the bottom is the quick pitch. Um, there's no, no adjustment you can make at all because you've got a guy in motion, but you see it's basically two tight ends uh, with one tight end in the slot. Uh, you're going to see how this one tight end motions over. And uh, basically, what really makes this play great is what the right tackle is doing. Watch what the right tackle does. He gets out. Even though that outside, that uh, right end has his outside shoulder, he gets out, sets the block, passes it off, and then blocks another guy downfield. I mean, that's amazing. Now, this year, I had to slow down as well, too. Look at how many defenders I got hemming me at the sideline. I have a slow power back, and watch what happens. One little juke move and all three of them whiff. I mean, what is this running is OP in this game. I mean, you guys have to be running the football early on. I mean, that that is that makes this game right now uh, is who can run the ball the best. Because I didn't even mean to lab this with LeGarrette Blunt. I thought, like, typically if I'm running a power or an outside run like this, I mean, the, the power helped right there as he breaks that tackle. One thing I learned from doing this is LeGarrette Blunt is an absolute animal. But either way, like I was saying, typically if I'd be labbing, I'd be using a speed back. And you're going to see how successful this play is with somebody who's not even that fast. Just imagine how good this would be working with somebody that actually has speed. So let's go ahead and let's keep running this. Look how the blocking sets up. I mean, the blocking is just disgusting. There's nobody around. You know what I mean? It's, it's just this is the most savage blocking run I could say that I've ever seen uh, in Madden 18, which I know hasn't been out very long. I put out a video already that I thought was the best run play. I put out two run plays already, but this one by far is just is just so unbelievable the way that it blocks and the way that it sets up. And like I said, it's really all about that right tackle. Look at this right tackle. The the the, the I think it's a right end is outside, and somehow the right tackle gets outside of that right end. The right end is so far out. There's no way that the right tackle should be able to get to it, and somehow. He gets out, like here again, we'll see it again. His job is that right end. Look how he gets outside. Look how he kicks outside and seals that edge on that defensive end. I've not seen that in any other running play. And he's doing it consistently, and this is a run play. 